Hey everyone, today I am interviewing John Chow from johnchow.com. Uh, thanks for coming on the show, John. Yeah, no problem. So, for those people who don't know about you, and I know you're already famous and actually most people already do know about you, tell me one thing about yourself. One thing about myself? Well, uh, one thing, I live in Vancouver and I have two daughters. Two daughters. Awesome. And you blog on johnchow.com. How much are you currently making off the blog every month? Well, the blog used to be put as income every single month. And basically from uh, September 2006, its first month was about 300 bucks, And then two years later, it was making over 40000 And it was at that point, my accountant and my advertiser told me to stop reporting it. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I've since, uh, I stopped at 40000 So. But it so does, it does, I stopped with when we hit about 40. Okay, so you're still making money, but you stopped reporting your income at $40,000 a month. Yes, that's right. But uh, with, the, with the way the blog makes its income, like a lot of it is passive. Like uh, I refer people to other ad networks and other services that pay me a monthly fee. And over the past five years, I refer thousands upon thousands of people to these various networks, and I get a percentage of them all. So you can pretty much guess that yeah, it's higher than what it used to be. Cool. So uh, yeah, because it pretty much builds all on top of each other, right? So every yeah. month it gets larger and larger because more people are making money from these networks, and you're getting a commission. That's right. So for those people who don't know, what do you mainly blog on? Uh, originally, the, the blog was just started just to talk about myself, hence the domain name johnchow.com. And it was, it, was, it was a personal site meant to update my friends and families on what's happening in my life. You know, I got families in Toronto, so I saw my mainland China. So it was a good way, you know, like they can just log on to the, to the blog and see what's happening in Vancouver. But one of the things I do talk about is I talk about stuff that interests me, you know, like uh, uh, restaurants, fine dining, cars social media, internet, and uh, e-commerce, making money off the internet. That's, uh, before the blog came along, I made my money with other types of websites and affiliate marketing, so the blog allowed me to write about those, write about those things that I could not write about in my tech sites. How much traffic are you currently getting to your blog on a monthly basis? Uh, currently, the blog itself receives about 10,000 readers per day. There's 100 120,000 RSS readers, and a mailing list of uh, over 100,000. So in total, you're getting 300,000 plus visitors a month to your blog, according yeah, to plus. Say, Google Analytics? Yeah, yeah. Perfect. So when you started out, and you said you started out, was it five years ago? Yeah. When you started five out five years, years ago, how'd you take your blog, and I'm assuming you weren't getting much traffic at all, right, because you weren't making what? much money. How'd you grow up from getting very little traffic to getting 10,000 visitors a day? What steps did you use in particular to grow from nothing to 10,000? Well, uh, in my content, I try not to please everyone. I generally, when I'm talking about an issue, I would take the extreme end. And because uh, I know, you know, controversy is what's self-circulation. So uh, when it comes to a topic, instead of being, well, I kind of agree, but I kind of disagree, I would say that I totally agree with that issue, completely right, and everyone else is wrong. <laughs> so uh, I would write, Controversial, very controversial posts, uh, such as. You know, you there, John? <laughs> could then get really mad at me, <laughs> and then other people would defend my position because you know, coming into Mister Closet with a woman, everybody knows that. So, uh, and, and sorry about that. The video froze there for a bit, but uh, what were yeah. you saying specifically? So you take the very extreme end, and yeah. And I would try to go for very controversial posts. Like I would talk about controversial topics. Okay? And an example of a, uh, one of the controversial topics would be like, uh, you know, why, why feminism is the cause of global warming. Because <laughs> it's true. Everybody knows that. But, you know, there are a few people who don't believe it. Okay, so you <laughs> use those tactics to get traffic, right? So you took the extreme end. But taking the extreme end, creating controversy, is one way to get traffic. Yeah. Um, on the other flip side, you must have used some sort of marketing channels to get your content out there, right? Oh, yeah. 
Because if yeah. I went out there and I just wrote extreme content and I started a brand new blog, it doesn't necessarily mean I'm going to get a lot of traffic. Mm -hmm. So other yeah. than writing controversy, what tactics did you use in specific to actually drive the traffic to those pieces of content? Uh, I use a lot of social media sites, bigger site. Like in the, when I first set it off, I was on the big front page quite often. Matter of fact, I believe in one month, I was able to get on the front page of Dig 25 times. Wow. And did you submit to Dig to get on the front page, or how did you get on the front page? Yeah, every one of those articles actually submitted by me. But then I, what I did was I kind of crafted my, my content to appeal to Dig users, because I, I know they like lists. They like, I know certain things that they do like that they will dig up, and certain topics that they won't dig up. You know, so I was already pro Apple, anti Microsoft. A lot of lists, that kind of stuff. So you and, uh, much wrote how to guides lists. Um, you did research by searching on Dig to see what users like and don't like. So you did pro Apple because there was a lot of Apple fanboys and sites. Yeah. You did stuff that was against Microsoft because there's a lot of Microsoft haters on there. Exactly. So you pretty much research what people or what has hit the front page in the past that was related to your blog versus what didn't make it to the front page in the past that you know was related to your blog. Yeah. Yeah, so and uh, that the dig actually got me my initial readership base as opposed to because every time I get a dig front page, I would get like 10, 20,000 people come to the blog. And Is that in total, or each time you got on dig, you got each time, each time I got on dig. That's right? a lot of visitors. <laughs> That's a lot of visitors. So, and the, what I would try to do, of course, is uh, you know, you would try to get them to subscribe to your blog. So, I guess you would get a two, three percent. Sign to my RSS or subscribe to my newsletter, and but you know when you when you're getting ten twenty thousand people, that's you know a good almost a yeah a good three four hundred people every time will that will subscribe. Yep. Yeah. So in addition to that, you also use um, SEO to get a lot of traffic to your site, right? Um, more yeah. so now than in the past. An yeah. interesting story about you is <laughs> you weren't ranking in Google at all; you were penalized. Uh, That's right. Do you mind talking about how you got penalized in Google and how you actually continued to grow your traffic without relying on Google, right? Because you're still growing and making money without getting much visitors from Google.com at all. Yeah. Yeah, well, basically, the Google ban came about because of a Google, of a Google bomb, which is what I did. I wanted, to, uh, I wanted to rank number one for the search term, make money online. And so what I did was uh, I set up a little contest. and. Well, it wasn't really a contest. I asked people to basically just review my blog, give an honest view of my, of my blog. I don't really care what they said, but when they linked to me, instead of linking to, with the word johnchow.com, I asked them specifically to link to me with the word phrase, make money online. So, and of course, that was actually against the Google TOS. The Google said, you can't really do that, but I did it anyway. And uh, I, I think I would have got away with it, except I was just so blatant about it. Like I, I advertise it heavily, and uh, basically what happened was I got like over 800 blogs doing a review about me with the phrase "make money online," and that shot me to number one for this term "make money online." And I suppose I should have quit at that point, but I just said, "All right, let's keep it going." And the, the reviews kept going in, and I suppose the competition, other bloggers who was ranking for that term, suddenly got pissed off. I must have got pissed off, reported me. And then one day, suddenly, I got, I was no longer ranking for. Cool. So. Go make money online. And then it's gone. I was wiped out. Google basically, they didn't actually nuke me off the, off the index. They just pushed me back past page 10. So you had like a minus 10 penalty, which your site uh, wasn't yeah. ranking anywhere yeah. on the top 10 pages. Yeah, that's right. You know, when people do a search for John Chow, I was on page 10. <laughs> right, and John Cow was number one. <laughs> yeah, I remember that JohnCow.com. So, and which was a blog that was on a similar topic than yours because you just started milking that. Yeah. And when you got penalized in Google, you still grew. What did you do to keep on growing your traffic? Because at that point, you couldn't rely on search traffic, and as everyone knows, Google's the number one site and it has a lot of power. But yet, you're still getting over a hundred thousand visitors a month without getting one pretty much or many visitors from Google. Well, at that point, I had my decision was either you know to comply with Google, you know, ask them to remove all those links and stuff, and try to get back in their good graces, or I could uh, use this as another opportunity, uh, another opportunity, 
to do another case study, and that is, you know, can you survive without Google Shopping? So basically, <laughs> I said, okay, let's try that instead. <laughs> so basically, I just from the I just from my nose at Google said, all right, all right, because at that point, after I got banned or got pushed to past page ten, all, all the blog post was, you know, this is pretty much the end of John Chow. If I won't hear from him again, because you can't survive on Google. So that, that's one of the reasons I decided to, okay, let's see if I, if I can actually build the blog and continue to grow the blog without the help of Google. And so that's what we did, and we continue on without Google. So I looked for new traffic source. And I would say the, uh, the number one reason the blog continued to grow and survive was uh, I had a mailing list. So you had a mailing list? I had a mailing list. I, I've been building that list alongside building Google traffic. And that list got to a nice size, and basically, with that, with that list, we represented a readership base that I can contact whenever I need to. So, so let's go back to mailing list. Mm -hmm. You're using that mailing list. You're sending out your content, new information to, so that way you continue to get readers back to your site, and then through it, you're obviously selling them on your uh, the ad networks and stuff like that, which you're making money on. How do you go about building a mailing list? Uh, the, you just uh, number one, I would say start from day one. Uh, my biggest mistake when I started the list was I waited a year before I actually started the list. Uh, the reason for that was because I said really basically the site was never meant to make any money, which is a personal blog, and it, it got into making money simply because I was challenged by readers to prove you can make money from it. So because of that, I never started a mailing list from day one. I waited for a year before I actually did it. And had I started that mailing list from day one, that list would probably be almost twice the size that it is today. Wow. And so, uh, yeah, so that, 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 that's, uh, if you look at it that way, you know, that's a lot of money that I potentially lost, if it because I didn't start early enough. But when you do start the list, basically uh, my biggest source of readership from the list, or my biggest referral source of uh, list building, is obviously the blog. So people come to the blog, and I try to do everything possible to get them to subscribe to the list. I just don't have one newsletter sign-up box on the upper right-hand corner. It's a total of eight different sign-up things on my blog that you may not see. Like, first time, first time reader, you very, very first time go to my blog, you're going to get hit with a big, humongous pop-up. Only, you only get it once because it's very, very annoying. So I cookie them for life, and so once they only see it once, they don't get it again. But then there's also the newsletter sign-up box in the upper right. There's also... Uh, there's also a, there's also a, a subscription link. If someone comments my blog, it sends a thank you email. So thank you for commenting. I like to give you a little gift, and that's someone subscribe to my blog to get this gift. And Does that what, actually work pretty well? When, it works actually quite well. I should actually, actually try that. I get a lot of comments. <laughs> yeah, even people commenting, it's just sending a thank you email. So I like to give you my book as a gift for commenting. And if you to get this book, just click this link to confirm, and it, basically that's an eight-word confirmation. <laughs> And, and what, what software do you use to actually do that? Uh, it's called, there's several, uh, opt-in comment is one. Opt-in comment, you can do with that. Uh, I'm not sure if it's still available, if it's really updated. There's another one called, uh, there's a new list software. That's called, I have it here. It's called, let me, uh, let me log into my blog and see it, because I, I really haven't turned it on. But it, it's, but not only can it do that, it can also help you get more comment because it encourages the uh, the reader to refer your refer your blog to other people because it gives them voice. It's like you know, tell your friends about me, and if you tell like five friends, you'll get this bonus. Ah. So and, and, and it give, and it gives the reader a special link, so it makes them affiliates for you. <laughs> yeah, so uh, that's it's pretty a, smart. Yeah, and so as you can see, like you refer. You, if you can refer one friend, you'll get this bonus. You refer five friends, ten friends, you get a lot of bonus. It's called, it's, but uh, yeah, it's, uh, what's okay, get the name over here. It's called, I have it here somewhere. List Eruption. So list eruption. And is that a WordPress plugin or it's, it's a WordPress plugin. Is it free? Uh no, it does cost money. And the it's other one app. is opt in. Yeah, that costs money too. What, what, what is that one called again? Uh, opt in comment. 
opt-in opt common. Cool. So you're building all these lists, you're using tools like the list eruption opt-in commons to help build it. But what are you managing your list in? Is it just through Feedweber? Well, Aweber. Aweber. So Aweber, through Aweber. Yeah. And is that what you're using to create the pop-up as well? Yes. Yeah. Uh, I've also got a chance, I'm going to be testing another pop-up. Aweber has a pop-up you can use or fade in. But uh, uh, pop-up domination is another one you can use. That's another premium WordPress plugin that you can use. It appears it looks a little nicer and, and gets better response. But uh, I, I'm going I'm to do a split test and find out. So out of all the methods you've been using to collect emails, what was the best way that you, uh, what tactic or plugin or whatever was the best one that led to the most amount of emails? Uh, the, the fade in, yeah. The initial pop up fade in. So the pop up, and that one you can do through Aweber, which yeah. really just charges a monthly fee for their. That's it. And, uh, this, yeah. and the second biggest one was, believe it or not, uh, my Facebook opt in box. Yeah, on my Facebook fan page, Instead of, instead of having fans see my wall, which is the typical fan page, I, I wrote a, uh, I, I created another page with my newsletter sign up box. So when a person that comes to my Facebook fan page, if they're not a fan, instead of seeing the wall post, they see the sign up box and saying, subscribe to my blog, get this free book, enter your name and email here. And that, and that has a 10% opt in rate. Wow. Yeah, and once they become a fan, once they sign up, they become my fan. The next time they visit, they see my wall posts. So, and, and what is your Facebook fan page? What's the URL of it? Uh, it's basically johnchow.com slash Facebook or so Facebook. So johnchow.com slash Facebook, it will take me there, and I'll see the opt-in. You will see an opt. Yeah, you'll see an opt-in for it. But if you're a fan, then you will see the wall posts. So now that you've collected all these emails, right? Uh, or actually, let's fast or go back a bit. To collect these emails, you're giving something away for free. That's right. What do you typically give away for free, or what do you recommend giving away for free? Uh, generally, I give away a ebook or something that doesn't cost me anything to uh, produce. Uh, the reason that the, the ebook didn't even take a lot of time to produce because by the time I produce an ebook, it's just basically a compilation of all my best WordPress posts, all my best blog posts. So I didn't have to pick up anything new. I just basically took all the uh, all, all my best money online posts from my blog and just compiled it, do a little bit of updating, and that became my ebook. And then the ebook eventually became my, my published book. <laughs> so. Awesome. Yeah. So you pretty much took the ebook and through it you gave or, or you use it to collect emails. Um, yeah. If you don't give something away, is it as effective to collect emails? It is, but your, your opt in rate or your the percentage of people signing, signed up will be greatly reduced. When I, when I started, I did not offer anything for free. I just say, you know, subscribe to johnchow.com, get updates. You know, basically, that's like everyone else. And I was getting about 10 signups per day just doing that based on the traffic that the blog was getting. But once the instant I put in the free ebook and say, you know, sign up here, get a free ebook on how, to, how I make money by blogging, the op they went from 10 a day to over 50. So by offering something for free, you five yeah. x your yeah. opt-in rate. Yeah, that's pretty amazing. So now that you got all these emails, right? Let's get into monetization. So you're yeah. collecting emails now. How do you go from collecting emails to making money from your website or blog? Right. The email is designed to do three things for me. Uh, one is the first thing is it allows me to build a relationship with the subscriber. The second thing it allows me to do allows me to brand myself as the expert in my particular niche. And the last thing it does is that it recommends products that will help them solve their problem. So those are the three things it is designed to do. And I, well, how I do that is I use a series, I use a series of autoresponders. Aweber has the ability to uh, allow me to create a series of email that will send to the subscribers at a predetermined time. So the first one goes out, it basically just says, hello, thank you for subscribing, hope you enjoy the book. If you wish to contact me, here's my Facebook account, here's my Twitter, here's my YouTube. And if you have any questions, feel free to email me. So in the first email is a very, very just getting to know each other email, building the relationship email. And a few days later, another email goes automatically saying that by now you must have read the book. So let's get you started and get you excited about like I'm sure you're excited about starting a blog. And it was and I would talk about the first couple of steps you want to set up blogs. So I would refer them, you know, you need a domain name, 
you can go out, check out GoDaddy or Namecheap. Those are the places I recommend. And there was some, I'll tell them where to go for web hosting. And of course, I, I would link GoDaddy, Namecheap, Hostgator with my affiliate link. So if they sign up for a blog, I would make some money that way. And then, so basically, this is a sales funnel. And as they go through the sales funnel, I'm building a relationship, I'm establishing trust, building my brand, and I'm also making money because I'm recommending products to them that will help them solve their problem, which is how do I make money from blogging? So if, yeah, if, when some, if someone goes through my entire sales funnel and buys every item that I recommend, I'll make over a thousand bucks off that person. But of course, that, that's not gonna happen because you know, some people would do nothing with the email. Some people would may sign up for an ad network too. Some people may uh, get an account at GoDaddy, may actually sign up for web hosting, in which case it makes something. But I worked it out that on average, each email that I collect is worth about $10 to me. So each email that you're collecting is worth 10 bucks, and if you can collect 100 a day, that's $1,000. Yeah. And out of all of the emails that you're pushing, um, how many auto so you have an autoresponder sequence, how many emails are in your sequence? It changes, it started, it started off at seven, and now it's at 12. So, okay, I've so been, I, I'm always constantly tweaking it. So the first one is get to know John Chow. Yes, thank you for this, downloading my ebook. The second one, is, or the first one's the ebook, second one is get to know John Chow. Third yeah. one is let's get started, here's a domain and hosting. Can you yeah. give me a few more examples of other emails in your autoresponder list? Oh yeah, the other one, and then there's a, an offer for let me set up a WordPress blog for you. Okay, and I, that, that email is basically said that I know that the biggest hurdle for most blogger is not that they can't blog, they can blog. It's just a tech it's just a technology barrier of setting up a WordPress blog. They don't know FTP, they don't know setting up a database, that kind of stuff is complicated. And because of that, many people don't start a blog. So I have an email that says, I will set up a blog for you. All you have to do, basically, I just say it's sponsored by Hostgator, which is my web host. You order web host from Hostgator, you send me, forward me the welcome email, I will install WordPress for you, along with six other plugins. I'll email you about your login. You can log in and you can start blogging. And, and, and how I many would people do, do you actually install WordPress for a day? Uh, I do about four to five a day, actually. Really? Yeah. That's pretty amazing. About, Who would ever realize that people need help installing WordPress? <laughs> it's, it's really amazing because this is basically my own interaction with the readers. Email calls my back and forth. I found that, yeah, a lot of people say, I would love to start a blog, but I don't know how to install WordPress. I don't know the first thing about FTP, MySQL, and all this other stuff. Okay? And I go, well, it really, the truth for the matter is, you just got to push the fantastical button, but <laughs> really not. <too. laughs> so that's basically what I do. Basically, when they send me back the login information, I just use fantastical, push the button, install it for them, just send them back their login, and I would get a host gator commission. So is there anything you learned with your autoresponder sequence that you can end up sharing? Like throughout the years, you said you tweaked it a lot. Is there yeah. one big lesson you've learned when it comes to monetizing your email list? Uh, yeah, the first thing is uh, with email, go for the soft sell. There's no need to go for a hard sell, like I said, uh, because email is flexible and you have a captive audience, a pre-qualified person, you, you can use it to build up a really, really good relationship and because you can establish a really nice relationship with the reader, there's no need to go for hard sales. That's why I say, that's why I always say, you know, recommend product to solve their problem. No need to sell them on that. And the easiest way to recommend a product is to just recommend the stuff that you're already using. Like I said, that's why I recommend for web hosting. I said, I'm hosted by HostGator, and I can recommend them because my, my blog has never gone down when I'm hosted by them. They're good, they have, up, they have good uh, wait up time. And they also gave me a custom coupon. They also gave me a coupon code that would give them another 24 percent off. So, it's it's uh, if you read the if you actually read the uh, the email, you see that it's, it's not a sell job at all. And you want to you understand why I, I get three to four days because it's it's a really really easy sell, at least to them. To the person reading it. Awesome. So uh, on a daily basis, do you mind sharing how many emails you're collecting now? Is it still fifty or has it gone up quite a bit? Uh, it's about two hundred. So 200 emails a day. So you're collecting 6,000 new email members daily. Yeah, on average. It's quite impressive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it, it, it keeps growing. When you're talking about your autoresponders, you have the WordPress stuff. 
Is there anything else in there? Um, so you're saying you did ad networks. Can you give me an example of an ad network autoresponder or an email that you did oh. in your sequence? Yeah, later. Well, you know, my email autoresponder is basically designed to take a person from serving a blog to making money from a blog. So somewhere in the sequence, of course, I, was, I would recommend ad network to the join. I say, it's time to monetize your blog. So I would, I would put, you just have Google AdSense. Now, Google, Google used to have an affiliate program. They don't anymore. But I still don't sign up with Google AdSense anyway. Just don't make any money from it. But that's fine, too, because that builds trust. Because I don't make money from Google, but I'm still going to recommend it. So I would also recommend other ad networks like uh, InfoLinks. InfoLinks, that, uh, InfoLinks. And InfoLinks would give me 10% of whatever the publisher makes for life. Oh, pretty crazy. Yeah, so, uh, so you know, if, if uh, they sign up for InfoLinks, they make 100 bucks, I make 10. Next month, they make 100 bucks, I make 10. As long as they're making money, I make 10%, and that's for life. So like I said, this is why my income has gone up over, uh, keep, or keeps going up, because I keep referring new publishers to InfoLinks and all these other ad networks that gives me anywhere from 2 to 10% of whatever they make. Awesome. So I know you're a busy guy. Um, we'll start wrapping this up. My final question for you is, for someone who's new and they're starting a blog or a website, um, let's specifically say blog, and they want to make money, right? Yep. What are three things you recommend to someone who's brand new to start making money from their blog? All right. Uh, the first thing I would say is you need to treat this blog like a real business. I mean, uh, I, I feel that most bloggers do not make money simply because they don't take it seriously because of the cost involved. It's next to nothing. You know, domain name is 10 bucks. Web posting is $4 a month. So, you know, for less than $100 a year, you could have a blog. So, but because of the such low, low barrier entry, people don't take it seriously. You know, easy in, easy out. And yet, a blog, you know, income potential is extremely, extremely high. But because there's so little money involved, people don't take it seriously. If I would, I would say, put yourself or pretend that you invested a quarter million dollars into your blog, like a real business. Like if you would have invested, if you invested a quarter million dollars into your blog, I would say most bloggers would not be running their blog the way they're running it today. So that's the first tip. Right? So treat it like a serious business. All right. Uh, second, second tip I would say is to be extremely consistent with your posting frequency. You know, don't Go gung, I see it all the time. You know, new blog goes up, the guys get excited, he goes gung ho, we see a slew of posts for the first month, and then they don't see any money coming in, and then the post starts filtering off into once a once every week, once every two weeks, once a month, and then they're gone. So be be consistent. You know, pick a posting frequency and stick to it. Um, I, what's the importance of being consistent? It's just like you just have to be consistent writing blog writing a blog post. So just choose, like me, I have blogged an average of two posts a day ever since my blog has started. So, or, or what I'm asking is, what does the consistency do for you versus if you were not consistent? Well, the cons consistency basically gets you into a frame that you got to do this every single time. So you're always constantly moving forward. And your readers will also get to expect, you know, well, we, your readers also expect to see new content when you go onto your blog. And you know, if you start off going gung ho doing one post a day and then you suddenly lose interest, we just expecting one post a day and then suddenly go, well, where's the post today? It's gone. And then they're gone too. So I've all, I made a commitment myself to basically average two blog posts per day. And I did it when the blog was making zero. And now that the blog is making tens of thousands per month, I'm still doing the same two posts per day. So I think I feel there's this level of consistency that is one of the major reasons for my blog success. People, I know that once, when a reader comes to my blog, they're going to see new content. They're expecting new content, so I had to give it to them. So be consistent. And the, uh, the third thing is just to have fun at this because uh, I started this blog as a hobby, and to me, it's still a hobby because it's what I do, it's what I enjoy. Uh, blogging is not a get rich quick scheme. It's a marathon, not a 100-meter dash. So when you pick a topic, pick a topic that you're passionate about, that you know something about, that you enjoy writing about, because this is not a game with friction. It's going to take quite a, a, it's going to take at least a year to two years for you to establish yourself as a brand and a go-to guy. 
Like I said, first eight months of the blog's life, made zero, made no money at all. Uh, but you kept at it, you keep at it, you, be, you keep consistent. But I kept writing about it because I do enjoy this topic I write about and I do enjoy and I am passionate about this stuff. And people will see you through that. And if you're not passionate about it and you don't enjoy writing about it, it's going to seem like a job and you're going to quit. And then you're going to quit long before you have time to establish yourself, to establish attraction or build a readership. So those are my three tips. Awesome. Thank you for your time. And uh, hopefully we'll see each other when you come back to Seattle or when you yeah, move uh, to Orange County, California. Yeah, I'll be back there in two weeks. So we'll see you then. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. Okay, Neil.